Summary of Rebecca, Not Becky, a novel written by Christine Platt. Chapter 1. DeAndrea Whitman stood in the sunken dining room of her Atlanta home, surrounded by fragrant long-stemmed lilies, meticulously arranged place cards, and the palpable weight of impending change. The farewell soiree, which she was hosting despite her reluctance, was meant to bid adieu to her black oasis in Buckhead before the family's move to the predominantly white suburb of Rolling Hills. The carefully chosen gold-rimmed china and elegant mini easels for place cards were the backdrop to a perfect evening that masked the underlying anxieties and challenges that awaited them. Three weeks remained before Deandria, her husband Malik, and their daughter Nina would leave behind the vibrancy of Atlanta for the unfamiliar terrain of rolling hills. As she rearranged the place settings, her mind raced with questions. How was it that three weeks felt both too short and too long? What would it be like to be the only black executive in a predominantly white office? How would Nina adapt to a new school that fell short of the standards of black excellence she had envisioned? Only three more weeks of being black and bougie with my besties. DeAndrea exclaimed, expressing her lament over leaving behind the cultural richness of Atlanta. Her voice echoed in the nearly empty room, bouncing off the walls adorned with memories and the imminent farewell that hung in the air. The move to Rolling Hills wasn't a choice born out of desire, it was a response to the relentless progression of life, marked by her mother-in-law's Alzheimer's diagnosis. The move was a necessity, dictated by the need to be closer to a dementia facility in Rolling Hills. This unexpected turn of events disrupted DeAndrea's carefully laid plans for a year of self-discovery after Nina started kindergarten. It forced her to confront the altered trajectory of her life, redirecting it toward a suburb that seemed far removed from everything she had known. As she meticulously adjusted the place cards, DeAndrea found herself grappling with what might have been. The move to Rolling Hills shattered the vision she had for herself, a vision that included returning to part-time work in law, possibly teaching at Emory Law School, or even embracing the role of a homemaker. Thoughts of another baby danced on the periphery, a notion disrupted by the impending relocation. The narrative weaved through DeAndrea's internal monologue, revealing the inner turmoil that accompanied the outward preparations for the farewell party. Seating arrangements became a metaphor for the broader challenges she faced, an attempt to control an uncontrollable future. The unexpected inclusion of Simone's dog, LL Cool J, added an element of chaos, a canine reminder of the unpredictability of life. Despite the tumultuous emotions, DeAndrea found humor in the chaos. Shittles, she muttered, her attempt to replace profanity with a more child-friendly expression. Malik's presence, with his supportive yet teasing demeanor, provided a brief reprieve from the gravity of the impending move. Their banter about LL Cool J's inclusion in the guest list offered a light-hearted moment in the midst of the emotional storm. As the countdown to the caterer's arrival continued, DeAndrea retreated to the upstairs, seeking solace in the routine of getting ready for the evening. Her internal conflict manifested in the choice of outfit, a black strapless sundress, a symbolic nod to the looming sense of loss and departure. The mirror reflected a smile, albeit a weak one, as she acknowledged the resilience required to face the challenges that lay ahead. The story shifted focus to DeAndrea's daughter, Nina, whose infectious enthusiasm and innocence provided a counterbalance to the weighty concerns of the adults. Nina's excitement about the upcoming party and the presence of familiar faces brought a touch of optimism to the narrative. Her twirls in a pink and white tulle dress conveyed a sense of purity and joy, momentarily alleviating the heaviness in the air. As DeAndrea applied a light layer of makeup, the routine became a ritual of self-care and preparation for the inevitable farewell. Her thoughts shifted to the mundane, the logistics of the move. The realization that the state-of-the-art dementia facility was in Rolling Hills, and the stark contrast between the predominantly white suburb and the vibrant community they were leaving behind. The story touched on DeAndrea's desire for a more diverse and culturally rich environment, expressing disdain for the lack of representation in Rolling Hills. Her aversion to white chocolate served as a metaphor for her apprehension about the homogeneity of their new surroundings. The reflection on yoga classes in Rolling Hills, compared to the ones in Atlanta highlighted the cultural disconnect she anticipated. Amidst the turmoil, DeAndrea couldn't help but wonder who would administer her Botox in Rolling Hills. 
The seemingly trivial concern symbolized the larger question of identity and self-care in an unfamiliar setting. The move represented not just a geographical change, but a shift in the very essence of her being. The narrative concluded with the realization that Nina's infectious optimism was almost contagious. As the family prepared for the farewell party, the juxtaposition of light-hearted moments and profound reflections offered a nuanced portrayal of the complexities surrounding their impending move to Rolling Hills. The story served as a poignant exploration of identity, family, and the resilience required to face the uncertainties of a new chapter in life. Chapter 2 Rebecca's summer vacation, a supposed escape into tranquility, unfolded amidst a picturesque backdrop of a cloudless sky, a gentle breeze, and the allure of a luxury rental complete with a heated pool. Yet, despite the idyllic setting, the promise of relaxation eluded her, replaced instead by a sense of restlessness that lingered like an unwelcome companion. The struggle began with the challenge of simply sitting still. Even as the elements aligned for a perfect late summer escape, Rebecca found herself grappling with an unfamiliar sense of unease. The vivid blue sky. The temperate breeze, and the luxury of a rented home with a pool capable of entertaining her kids, all seemed to be the ingredients for a picture-perfect getaway. Yet, despite the external perfection, Rebecca couldn't quell the inner turmoil. Her family, seemingly unfazed by the same conundrum, reveled in the leisurely pace of vacation life. Her husband, Todd, still lay in the embrace of slumber, oblivious to the morning sun. Jack and Tina, child-free and carefree, enjoyed the luxury of sleeping in, a privilege Rebecca, as a mother, found herself deprived of. The pool. An oasis of delight for her daughters, beckoned them since the early hours, their laughter echoing across the vacation home. Rebecca, on the other hand, struggled with a dilemma, an internal conflict between the desire to delve into a book on the history of race and racism and the persistent calls from her daughters playing in the pool. It was a battle between personal growth and familial duties, a microcosm of the perpetual struggle faced by many mothers attempting to balance self-discovery with the demands of motherhood. As August adorned the East Coast with the hues of summer, Rebecca's Instagram feed became a kaleidoscope of envy-inducing vacation posts. Hello from Captions accompanied beach and poolside selfies, each seemingly portraying a utopian vacation experience. A particular post by her friend Harita, showcasing a litany of extravagant activities in Turks and Caicos, became the catalyst for a moment of social media venting. Rebecca, feeling a twinge of discontent, took a screenshot of Harita's family in repose, captioned with a sarcastic remark, and sent it to her girlfriends. The immediate flood of eye-rolling and laughing emojis provided a momentary release from the perceived inadequacies of her own vacation. Yet, the Instagram-worthy self-reflection continued. Rebecca's attempt at capturing the perfect vacation selfie became an unexpected ordeal. The book on racial history, its cover seemingly judging her, lay unopened as the poolside distractions took precedence. Every attempt at capturing her own image resulted in a series of unsatisfactory outcomes. The struggle between the desire to present an idealized version of herself on social media and the raw, unfiltered reality became a poignant metaphor for the dissonance between curated online personas and the authentic human experience. Amidst the selfie debacle, Tina, a friend lounging nearby, intervened with mimosas, a mid-morning indulgence that blurred the lines between relaxation and guilt. The plastic clink of flutes and the effervescence of grapefruit mimosas momentarily shifted the focus from self-doubt to the simple pleasure of a shared moment. As Tina delved into a book titled Choose You, Every Damn Time, Rebecca decided to embrace the cliché of vacation photos. The Bernies on vacation pose, and homage to the stereotypical Instagram aesthetic, replaced the failed selfies. Rebecca surrendered to the cliché, realizing that sometimes conformity to expectations was the path of least resistance. Yet, even as she succumbed to the cliché, the underlying struggle with self-perception persisted. Tina, seemingly unburdened by the societal expectations of aging, dismissed Rebecca's concerns and embodied a carefree attitude. The tension between maintaining a youthful appearance and embracing the inevitability of aging became a focal point touching upon broader themes of societal standards and personal acceptance. 
Amidst the poolside banter and introspective musings, the arrival of husbands and children injected an element of joyful chaos. The carefree antics of Todd and Jack, reminiscent of college days, added a layer of familial warmth to the scene. However, the underlying tension between Tina and Jack, apparent from their passive-aggressive exchanges, hinted at a more profound discord beneath the surface. The night before, at dinner, a seemingly innocuous comment from Jack about Tina's frequent girls' getaway trips unraveled into a passive-aggressive exchange. The dynamics between the usually easygoing siblings-in-law took an unexpected turn, leaving Rebecca puzzled and contemplating the unspoken complexities of their relationship. Rebecca, caught in the crossfire of familial responsibilities and personal aspirations, grappled with the intricacies of family dynamics. The unspoken tension between Tina and Jack mirrored her own internal conflicts, underscoring the delicate balance between personal choices and familial expectations. As Rebecca navigated the poolside chaos, the passage delved into themes of societal expectations, self-image, and familial relationships. The juxtaposition of curated online personas with the nuanced reality of human experience painted a poignant picture of the modern struggle for authenticity in the age of social media. In the midst of sunscreen applications, mimosa-fueled banter, and the playful splashes of children in the pool, Rebecca's internal monologue encapsulated the multifaceted nature of the human experience. The passage served as a microcosm of the challenges faced by individuals navigating the intricacies of identity, societal expectations, and the pursuit of genuine connection in a world dominated by curated narratives.